So here I am, 4.30 a.m. on a wet, miserable Thursday morning. And I'm heading to Donegal for a camping trip to take some photographs. By the time I'd got to Dublin, I'd already told myself 10 times that I was off my head going up here in this weather. My journey was from the southeast to the northwest, heading up the M9 onto the M1, eventually up through the north into Oma onto Letterkenny, and eventually right up to Rossquill Holiday Park. A total of 450 kilometers, which Google Maps tells you it's about 5 hours 14 minutes, but that's without any brakes or traffic. So I reckon it took about 7 hours in total, which wasn't bad considering the journey. So I've made it to the first location, uh, Murder Hole Beach, which is up past the town of Downings, way up in North Donegal, right on the, the coast. Uh, it's not too far from uh, Fanet Lighthouse. Unfortunately, it's been raining since I got here, which was just over an hour ago. So I decided to catch up on the early start and get some sleep in the, the back of the car. It's big enough, to, thankfully, to put a, an airbed, a sleeping bag, and um, yeah, it'll do. It'll keep me in out of rain. It passed an hour, makes me refreshed. Unfortunately, no sign of it stopping. So. I think I'll probably head back into Downings and um, try and get a coffee and some lunch or something. Not sure what's open because of the COVID, but uh, I'll go in and have a go and maybe pass another hour and hopefully this rain will be gone by then. I'll come back out here and uh, hopefully get some shots for the afternoon. So the rain has finally stopped and I'm just walking up to the gate at the entrance to the field for... Um, uh, murder hole. There's a pathway that leads up through the fields. You're not allowed to drive, but the landowner does allow access for walkers. When you go through the second gate, just veer off to the left and don't follow the actual track. And that'll bring you straight over some sand dunes then and into Murder Hole Beach. Once you crest the sand hills, you'll get your first view of the little horseshoe bay that is Murder Hole Beach with this little island straight in the middle. Now there are lots of reasons given as to why this is called Murder Hole. One of my favourites is from legend when Fionn McCool killed Gorham McMorna in revenge for killing his father. It was said to have taken place at a rock, Carrickgill, close to this beach. Now Fionn McCool was the leader of Nafina. Nafina were magical soldiers whose duty it was to protect Ireland from foreign invasion. They were a loyal bunch of soldiers and fought their enemies fiercely with violent consequences. So back to the present and let's see if Fionn McCool can help me get a magical image out of this. I used three bracketed images because there was a lot of highlights in the sky and I wanted to control those, put them all together and see how it got on. So here it is, the first image from the trip up north. It's nothing magical. But look, I was happy enough and um, the skies were very dramatic and I added a few light rays just to give it that little extra punch in post-processing. Following that, I decided to walk up onto the cliffs on the right as you're looking out towards the sea. Now it's a nice easy hike up onto the cliff, there's no serious climbing or anything involved. But there's a fabulous view of the actual beach from there looking down on the sea. Now there was a, an horrendous gale blowing that day so I couldn't get up the drone or anything. But um, I managed to get a couple of shots from up here. So here's the best of the images that I took up from the cliff top. Um, dramatic sky, nice dappled light on the headland, but the sea is very calm or muted and that's because the gale that was blowing was offshore, so that just kept everything calm and uh, I would have liked to see a bit more action there in the sea. I headed across to the cliffs on the other side of the beach to try and get something from there but it just didn't work out. So I decided I'd pack up and head for Fanet Lighthouse because with all the clouds around more than likely be raining again tomorrow. 
Now Murderhole Beach and Fanad Lighthouse are not that far away as the crow flies, but because they're on different headlands, you've got to come back a little bit and then go out again. So it's about 45 minutes in total, or 28 kilometers. So arriving at Fanet, I was delighted to see the drama was still in the sky, and I was hoping for some color when things settled down in an hour or so for sunset. Fanad Lighthouse is like Hook Lighthouse with regard to parking. You can drive right up to it, hop out of the car and then there's easy access to the headland and lots of compositions that you can just wander about and pick your best and choose whatever you like yourself. So I wandered around and took a few photos here and there, but nothing inspiring. It was obvious to me at this stage that there wasn't going to be any glowing sunset. There was too much cloud around. But I wasn't too bothered because the sky was very dramatic and I was hopeful. Eventually I found a rock pool which was obviously too high up for the sea to fill so it must have been filled with rainwater and that made a good foreground for me. This is the resulting image. I think the rock pool adds a really nice foreground. All the rain had a positive effect in this instance and the skies while they're not golden they're very dramatic. This shot, I suppose, emphasizes the beauty of the blue hour. So, here I am, day two. Rough night, very windy, and um, a few minutes ago it started raining again. So I just had to shower and uh, look forward, no point going anywhere in this rain. Time to make your coffee and get ready for, hopefully, what will be um, a good day shooting but it, it's very cloudy again a nice lady in centre filled up my flask for me last night because I just had a feeling with this wind I wouldn't be able to get the cooker out so thank god for that and might be camping but I do like my coffee so always bring a little plunger I'll leave that for a few minutes now I'll put that somewhere safe so the plan for today is to head down to uh, the Poison Glen and there's a little church there called, uh, well ruins of a church called Don Louis Church and also then into um, what they call the Poison Glen and then Glen Bay National Park. Uh, there's also a Doe Castle which has a lake surrounding it and I was hoping to get the drone out. I haven't been able to get the drone out at all since I came up because of the high winds um, I even got up about 5.30, well, 5 o'clock I suppose this morning to see was it any calmer I was going to drop over to Fanad again because I'd like to get a few shots of Fanad Lighthouse from out over the sea. But uh, no, it would have been carried off to Iceland or God knows where. So um, that's the plan for today and I'll check in with you later. The ruins of the old Dunluwy Church lie about 40k inland and to the southwest of where I was staying at Rosquill Holiday Park. The weather was against me again, but I kept thinking if it would only clear up this great drama in the sky. As you drive along the R251, about a kilometre or so before they turn off down into the glen for Don Louis Church, there's a little lay-by on the left. There's a couple of important things here. One, there's a fabulous view over Dunlewy Lock and the church. And two, there's a little van there that sells excellent coffee. So here's the view down into the glen from the lay-by. And that's the little church that I'm setting out to capture. The ruins of Dunlewy Church sit at the foot of the majestic Mount Erigo. A lady named Jane Smith Russell had the church built in the early 1850s as a memorial to her husband, the landlord of the Dunlewy estate. With the decline of the Dunlewy estate and the diminishing congregation, the church fell into disrepair and the roof was removed for safety in 1955. In the graveyard, there lies the body of a man who was in a mixed marriage. He was in Church of Ireland, she was Catholic. He died first and is buried in the grounds of this church. 
but she, being a Catholic, did not want to be buried there. She is buried in the Catholic Church across the valley, the Church of the Sacred Heart. However, even in death, she wanted to remember her husband, and her grave in the Catholic graveyard faces across the valley to her husband's resting place, even though all the other gravestones in the Catholic Church point the other way to hers. This first shot has Mount Erigel in the background, but as you can see, more than half of it is probably covered with cloud. These next two shots are taken from the opposite side to the gate, so when you go in the gate, you've got to walk around to the far side of the church. Now be aware it is quite buggy in there, so if there's after being a lot of rain, you will need some kind of hiking boots or wellies. In terms of processing, um, I suppose I wanted to give a look of the day, which was a very soft day to say the least, and just to give that little diffused, misty, mysterious look. Not black and white, but still very des desaturated, I suppose. My final shot from Dunlewy Church was from the drone. And while the shot itself is not exactly stunning, it does show the beautiful landscape within which the church is situated. And on another day, the light will be better. At this stage, it was heading for late afternoon. So I decided to head back to Fanet. I still hadn't got a shot from a drone of Fanet Lighthouse. And um, that's something I really wanted because I was here again in 2015. I didn't have a drone at the time. So I was hoping to maybe get it up this time as the wind wasn't as strong as yesterday. There was lots of cloud movement around. So I decided I'd experiment with a hyperlapse. This short sequence has 200 images in it. And so I finally got my drone images of Fanet Lighthouse. This first one here just shows the, I suppose, the entire structure starting at the helicopter pad and moving down to the lighthouse itself. I didn't get any particular sunrise sun shot here, but the textures in the sky throughout the three of these uh, are fabulous. I, I was really looking at all the rain over the few days meant the skies when it did stop raining were really dramatic. This last one is a huge image. It consists of nine raw images, three across the top, three in the middle and three at the bottom, and it's done automatically by the drone. And I must say it's very rarely that you'd have any problems uh, matching them up in a photo merge in Lightroom. It really does a great job. Following that, it was time to get an early night and get ready for a big road trip the next day. I was starting my return to Waterford, although not be it by a direct route. My plan was to visit Doe Castle and try and get a sunrise, then move on to Down Patrick Head, and finally then, by late evening, to get to Connemara. I was going to stay over in Connemara, get some pictures the next day, and then finally drive straight home. The next morning presented me with almost perfect conditions for a drone shot at Doe Castle. And this is really the only one I got. I tried other compositions, etc., but this is the only one that really worked for me. Having got that shot, it was a happy camper that got into the car for the two and a half hour drive to Downpatrick Head. Eventually, after a stop for the obligatory coffee and breakfast roll along the way, I arrived at Downpatrick Head. Having not been here before, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I'd seen pictures of the sea stack in that, but nothing of the area around it. This is what greeted me from the car park. As I walked through the gate and up the field, I must say I was a little worried about the number of people that were here already. The car park was full and I could see crowds up above. But you're sure, I needn't have worried, as no one can stand in front of you when you're on a cliff hitch. Now as a photographer, you've probably had conversations with your buddies about when you go somewhere new you haven't been before, and you've seen pictures of it online or wherever, and then you might be disappointed and say, oh, is that it? 
Well, Doom Brishta is not one of those. Doom Brishta certainly has the wow factor. So here are my two images of Doom Brishta. The first one is where I landed first after walking up the track or the road up through the field and straight over to the cliff. This is exactly the first spot I hit and despite walking up and down the cliffs I came back to here for the composition. This second one is from where the people are actually standing on the headland in the first one and it takes the old lookout hut from World War II into the image and the people standing on the cliff it really gives it a, a sense of scale I think. And this is my last shot from Down Patrick Head. When you're looking at Doombrishta, looking out to sea, turn to your right and walk around the coastline and you'll see this headland standing out. And it has no less than four sea caves and the waves just crash in there and they, they, they wheel back out again and the, um, the motion is fabulous in the sea. So I headed back towards the car park, happy with the morning's work and looking forward to Connemara. Little did I know the deluge of rain that was to follow. When I reached Connemara, I can only describe the rain as torrential and constant. It was flowing across the roads. I gave it an hour and decided enough was enough and headed for home, cutting the road trip short by a day. Looking back, despite the weather, it was a fairly productive three days and well worth the trip. Now I didn't get an opportunity to sign off on the video, I'd planned to do that in Connemara. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like or a comment below, or even better, subscribe for notifications of my next video. So that's it for now, until the next video, stay safe and bye for now.